good morning. This is a, a recording, shall I say, um, because we've all got something else on this morning. And so I'm doing this on a dry day and hopefully it's dry on Wednesday as well. But welcome to you, wherever you are. I'm going to begin this morning as we enter God's presence with a, a little prayer. Lord, awaken us to your call. Open our ears to hear your words. Open our eyes to your presence. Open our hands with your generosity. Open our hearts to your love, that we may live and work for you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to read about Jesus' life. And from Mark chapter 6, reading from verse 1 to verse 13. And I'm reading from the message. He left there and returned to his hometown. His disciples came along. On the Sabbath, he gave a lecture in the meeting place. He made a real hit, impressing everyone. We had no idea he was this good, they said. How did he get so wise, all of a sudden, get such ability? But in the next breath, they were cutting him down. He's just a carpenter, Mary's boy. We've known him since he was a kid. We know his brothers, James and Justice and Jude and Simon, and his sisters. Who does he think he is? They tripped over what little they knew about him and fell, sprawling. And they never got any further. Jesus told them, A prophet has little honour in his hometown, among his relatives, on the streets he played in as a child. Jesus wasn't able to do much of anything there. He laid hands on a few folk, sick people and healed them. That's all. He couldn't get over their stubbornness. He left and made a circuit of the other villages teaching. Jesus called the twelve to him and sent them out in pairs. He gave them authority and power to deal with the evil opposition. He sent them off with these instructions. Don't think you need a lot of extra equipment for this. You are the equipment. No special appeals for funds. Keep it simple. And no luxury inns. Get a modest place and be content there until you leave. If you're not welcomed, not listened to, quietly withdraw. Don't make a scene. Shrug your shoulders and be on your way. Then they were on the road. They preached with joyful urgency that life can be radically different. Right and left, they sent the demons packing. They brought wellness to the sick anointing their bodies, healing their spirits. Amen. Thanks be to God. I haven't disappeared. I was just laying down my Bible. As you probably are well aware, not everybody welcomed Jesus. That should be well obvious, but especially not in his hometown. They couldn't get past the fact that he had been a boy, the son of Joseph, that they knew his family. He was just one of them. It's a bit like me going back to Stonehouse. I couldn't do it. Well, I could do it, but it wouldn't be right. People would just remember me as I was as a child in the Sunday school or in the girls' brigade or leader or whatever, they wouldn't see, as they'd say, they saw, couldn't see Jesus as a prophet, as a priest. Not that they couldn't even see me if I went back as a minister. Because people remember who you were. It's a bit like having a chat last week with folks and they remember everybody 
as their own, if they're a female, as their own maiden name. They remember that. It's the same everywhere. Sometimes we can't get past that we take on another stage in life. And it was the same with Jesus. They couldn't get past the fact that here was this little boy growing into a man who was healing and preaching. They couldn't get past that. Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. He knew them and he didn't expect it from them. I would probably be the same. But before he left, he had said, prophets are not without honour, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And that's very, a very sad statement from Jesus. When people refuse to hear, Jesus moves on. He goes to other villages. Jesus never forces himself on anyone. We all have the choice to accept him as our Lord and our friend or to ignore him. Many are not antagonistic to Jesus, but they just can't be bothered to put themselves out. And maybe as we come out of this pandemic, maybe that's what we're, we're seeing. People can worship, they can have their faith, but they're forgetting their service, that our faith leads to action. It's all about being fed. It's not about doing. It's not about going out. It's not about mission. It's very, become very personal. And so, if Jesus moves on, he won't come back unless we actually call him back. Unless we actually call him back in. And if you remember, he sent his disciples out in twos, giving them some of his power over unclean spirits. They were to go out in his strength and not their own. They were to go out in faith, not taking any provisions or money or extra clothing. Some people might be going away for a few days or a few weeks or whatever. Maybe not abroad, but as Hugh Meikle says to me, Ali, we're not taking the kitchen sink. We don't need it. How many of us pack the kitchen sink? It's a case of if we're in this country, we always take, just in case, we take hot weather clothing, cold weather clothing, windy and wet clothing. Um, we take everything for every eventuality. But Jesus wasn't just saying that. It wasn't just about material things that we can touch, like this rose. It was about travelling light. They didn't need degrees or theological training. They didn't need special qualifications. All they needed to know was Jesus. And as we start thinking about a new church rising from the ashes of the pandemic, people need faith. Faith and a willingness to serve. A willingness to put themselves out there, knowing that they have been sent by Jesus. And that's what makes an apostolic church. That's what makes a church. People who are called and sent by Jesus. They didn't have to take a collecting bag because they were to give rather than seek to receive. Give rather than receive. We know the church buildings need money to survive, but if raising money is a priority, it's giving out the wrong message. Like our God, we are to give more than we demand. The disciples weren't sent out to create a message. They went out as Christ's messengers, evangelists, which are good news tellers. In a sense, we're all called to be 
God's men, messengers, angels. And the mission of the disciples was to share in the mission of Jesus. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. That comes from John's Gospel in chapter 20. And so, the message of the disciples begins as Jesus began. Repent. It's a call to turn around. Turn around because you're going in the wrong direction. Come back. It's a call that disturbs, even today. A call to be aware of where we're going and to accept that we can change. The disciples revealed the mercy, the loving kindness of God in bringing liberty and healing. Like Jesus, they weren't to force themselves on anybody. God respects our freedom. He said, if any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. Hmm. How do you think the people of Nazareth felt about that? A testimony against them. Maybe they felt slighted. Mm. Demeaned. Mm. Have a thought. But also have a thought. In this day and age, how do we as our church express the mission of Jesus? Some of us are, a few of us from all the churches, very few of us, are going into Kersey Bank Community Project at the moment to help feed the children, the children that don't get food in, this, in the summer. We're hoping to set up a bereavement group there too. How do we express the mission of Jesus? Is it all about giving? Or is it all about taking? It should be about giving. When, another question is, when do we proclaim the message to those outside and show them acts of mercy, revealing the loving kindness of God? Do we see that all who are called by Jesus are involved in his mission, including every one of you? We are all involved in Christ's mission whether we like it or not, whether we're able or not, because we can all lift a phone. The phone to a friend, but equally the phone to God and pray. Our faith is not only about our faith. Our faith is also about action. And if there's no action, Faith will die. Church will die. Because what people won't see us and hear us and hear the message that Jesus sent us to take to every corner of the world. Mission has to be the focal point of the church in Grangemouth. It has to be the focal point of what we are and what we will become. Or without mission, people do not become followers. And that's quite hard to accept. And I'm sure it's not something we want to hear or accept. So let's get on with it. Let's go out. Let's be like the disciples. Let's take the courage and strength and be as Christ to others. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, giver of light and life, for you give us of your love, you give us of yourself. Open our ears to your call and our hearts to your love. Send us out in the power of your spirit to proclaim the good news of your saving love as revealed in Jesus Christ. We give thanks that you sent Jesus to live among us and we pray that 
we might share in his mission, that we may pass on the message of the gospel and show acts of mercy that reveal God's love. That it's not all about taking, but is all about giving. May your whole church be moved to share in the ministry that is theirs, not just of one person. We remember today all involved in the healing ministry, all involved in our NHS, all involved in giving our vaccinations, all involved in testing and further investments and further scientific exploration. We thank you, Lord, for all those who have given of their time. And we ask you to bless all those who have served their country, their fellow man, during this time. And we pray that each one of us might serve you in whatever way we can. We can be grateful for our homes, but we, some of us might wish that we had a garden to, to sit out in in the good summer weather. So help those of us appreciate the colours around us. If we can look out a window and see some grass, help us to appreciate the life around us, of nature, but also of people. Help us, O oh Lord, to appreciate all that you have given us. And so hear us and show us your loving kindness as we rejoice in the good news of eternal life. We also remember in your presence friends and loved ones who are now departed from us. We share with them in the fellowship of all your saints and commend them and ourselves to your unfailing love. Accept these prayers, O Lord, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Priest, our King. Amen. Well, until the next time, I think it will be Aftab next week, um, and maybe the week after, and then it will be me again. So, take care, God bless, and think about the questions I've posed. Have a ponder, have a prayer, have a thought, have a smile or a scorn. Just think. God bless. Bye for now.